We're more than halfway through 2024 already, which means it's time to talk about my top 10 favorite television shows for 2024 so far. I've already talked about my favorite movies so far for the year, my worst movies of the year, but I want to stick with the positivity and talk about the best television shows of this year so far. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below, hit that like and subscribe button, and let's dive into this. Coming in at my number 10 is House of the Dragon Season 2. I found that the season is not as good as the first one yet. It has so far the best episode out of the entire series but as of right now I'm still waiting to see how the rest of the season comes together we're at the midway point as of me recording this I'm assuming it's only gonna get better and even more glorious and specifically the way that House of the Dragon has built up is that the first half so usually all strategic movement and then the back half is just absolute great execution but I I've enjoyed it it's more House of the Dragon it's more Game of Thrones it's more fantastic performances from every single person involved in every single week the scheming the politics the action the fucking the everything the gore the dragons it's about what you expect from this and this is a season that i expected to be slower and from what i'm getting i'm still entertained by it is it the most mind-blowing thing yet no it didn't need to be no, but it is one of those shows that I'm still enjoying week to week and happy to still be watching week to week. Gets me into my number nine, and this has only gone up after I rewatched it, and that is Invincible, the back half of season two at least, which they did a weird thing where like half the season came out last year, the rest of the season came out this year. Dumb choice, in my opinion. They should have just had it all together, but, but season two, I was a fan of. But at the same time, I felt like it was a little bit messy. But after I went back and actually rewatched part one and part two back to back, Invincible only grew on me a little bit more. I still don't think it's as great as season one. I think season one is like one of the best pilot first seasons ever for any sort of show. But season two delivers some of my favorite moments with, of course, Invincible and Omni-Man and setting up other things, specifically some stuff in the multiverse that I loved from the comics. And I think the way that they, again, continue to take stuff from the comics and only make it stronger, make it better, place it in different aspects. Maybe they bring some things from later on in the comics forward. Maybe they put some things backwards. I really love the differencing of that all, but it always makes me so happy to see how they're able to elevate the material that was already given to them, which the comic itself is glorious. It's fantastic, but Invincible Season 2 was exactly that. The animation was a little bit stronger as well. The action, the gore, you just heard me talk a lot about that in House of the Dragons, but it's its still kind of glorious here. But Mark still becomes that main character that I love to follow through, and I love to see the adventures he goes on, and primarily where this season ends at, I think just makes me so clamoring for the next bit of Invincible. And again, I've read the comics, but the show just gets me back and brings back a lot of those feelings that I had after reading the comics. So very excited to see what they do with Invincible Season 3. Hopefully we don't have to wait what seems like a bajillion years. Then at my number eight, this one's a hit or miss. Some people really like this series and others not so much, but for me, count me on board for Avatar The Last Airbender, the Netflix live action series. Now, there are certain things in here that they changed that I'm still not completely on board with, specifically the one thing that I couldn't talk about in my review, which was Aang not waterbending the entire season. I think that is actually like one of the biggest misses for this, and I hope they correct that very fast in the next season, but... I am such a massive fan of Avatar The Last Airbender. I love that show. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. And I knew nothing would be able to live up to it, but I was still excited to see what they were able to bring into live action. And overall, I thought this was just a really tightly knitted, almost perfect adaptation of what I expected from Avatar The Last Airbender. I think the performances all around and all across the board are great. And I think they bring some new things that I didn't really expect or want, but they make better all throughout this entire series. And even the bending, I was very interested to see how they were gonna bring the bending to life and the visual effects, and I thought all of that was, again, awesome. Every single time an action scene was happening, I was hyped. The entire kaiju water beast in the last episode with Aang is still like one of the most glorious experiences on TV this year. Again, going back to those performances, I think everyone is just stellar in here. Gordon Cormier is just almost near perfect as Aang. I wanted a little bit more of Katara. I'll say that. Like, I think Katara could have used a little bit more to do in here, but again, good. Ian Osley, Asaka, very surprising considering how much there was so much controversy on certain things talked about with Sokka's character 
Dallas Leo, though, I think was phenomenal as Prince Zuko. I think he nailed every bit of Zuko that I wanted. And also, I like that they move certain things forward in terms of Zuko and what I really needed to know here. Uncle Iroh, Paul Lee is just... Uh, the most perfect casting you could have had for here. And I, again, I'm excited to see what they do with like Fly Fire Lord Ozai with Daniel Day Kim playing him and other certain characters that may be coming up in the future, such as Toph. It's just a very surprising series. I expected to like at least enjoy it, if not be disappointed. And I walked out going, wow, that was one of my favorite experiences so far for television this year. And speaking of big surprises, at my number seven is the Mr. and Mrs. Smith show with Donald Glover. I did, I was excited for this. I was excited for this. I'll say that just because Donald Glover's writing it. I know he's going to be on board for it, but I didn't know what I was getting into when I started the series. I, I got the screeners and I watched them. And from the first episode, I was hooked. What I liked so much about the show instantly was the way that they actually told the story from the point of an actual relationship, how they kind of mixed up this concept of Mr. And Mrs. Smith. It's not a direct adaptation of the, sh of the movie. It's more of actually forcing two people into a relationship and seeing how that relationship flourishes and comes together. And it's two unlikely people that should not be together. And weirdly enough, Donald Glover and Maya Eskrin like have wonderful chemistry. And if you would have told me that they would have from the first few minutes of the first episode, I would have told you you're insane. But the writing was so smart. And seeing how each episode is a point in their relationship and the way that it comes together. How does double dating work in a spy life? How does meeting your in-laws work in a spy life? How does, well, going to therapy as a couple work in the spy life? And it was so entertaining. It was so awesome. It was funny. It was relatable. It was a great date show. The reason it's not higher on the series, I'm still hit or miss on the ending. Um, the ending of this series ends in a very open-ended session. It has been renewed for a season two, but rumor is, is Donald Glover is not coming back, and neither is Maya. I do not like that. Depending on how they handle the ending of this will kind of reflect on my entire excitement for the show, but I think that is a missed opportunity to not bring him back. We will see what happens. Still really enjoy the show. You should definitely check it out. Then talking about more Prime Video series, let's jump into my number six, which is The Fallout Show, a show that... You know, for people who don't know, Fallout is one of my favorite video game franchises of all time. And when I first watched the show, I really liked it. I thought it was so much fun. I think there's so many cool things to it. And it really brings the game to life and so many cool nuances. And particularly the way that the Westworld creators, Jonathan Nolan, really puts the essence of the game there. Where the game is a lot about a roaming, side questing, kind of fucking around in the wasteland and seeing who you meet along the way until magically you get to your destination by the end. And even when we get to that ending and you see the big homage to Fallout New Vegas, it, it just made me so gloriously happy. But also the performances in here. Walton Goggins is absolutely stupendous in here. Ella Purnell is like such a special character that I was obsessed with. And I think most of the internet was as well. But it made me want to play the video games again. A franchise that I was kind of a little bit over just because of like how much time and hours I'd put in. And I jumped back in and played literally all of them that you can on modern consoles now. Three, four, New Vegas, uh, even 76 I tried again. And if the point of this show was to get me excited back for the franchise, but as well as bring like a nostalgic piece of a memory of my life to life in live action, they executed that so well. And then when I rewatched it a second time with my co-host Phil over on our podcast into the Geekiverse, which you should definitely check out when I watched it again with him, who he is an even bigger fallout fan than me. I like the show even more. I don't know if it was getting to experience it with a friend who's like even more of a massive fan than me. Or just getting to rewatch it and understanding the type of show that now I'm getting. Fallout nailed it in almost every category and I was so happy with it. Get into my number five, which is The Boys Season 4, which I think for most people is not over yet as I'm putting out this video. For me, I've seen the entire season and I loved it. Now, I know a lot of people haven't been huge on this one per se, which is a little bit weird for me, but... I love this season. I think it starts off a little bit slow, but this is a great build-up season for a finale season, which has already been confirmed that season five will be the final season of this iteration of characters. And I think, again, this is that perfect little setup season, setting up for the future. It takes a little bit to get on board. Not everyone's liking all the storylines, but I do like, I'm one of the minority ones, 
where I like that every character is getting something to somewhat do. I like that A Train is not just is like actually doing something. He's not wasted with material, and that goes for other characters as well. And for me. The Boys Season 4 really nails in its gravitas of what it's trying to do with its characters, with its thematics, but as well with the buildup of suspension and using Homelander as a character where you never know when he that man walks into a room, you never know what Anthony Starr's character is going to do. And that goes from the performance to also the writing. And I've just found that The Boys is like one of those special series that I've had an up and down road with. I love the first season. I thought the second season on rewatches is okay. Season three, I thought, again, kind of started off a little rocky, but got excellent. But then I started going, okay, you know what? I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Let's let's start to end this stuff. Gen V kind of won me back on board. And this season, again, starts off a little bit okay, but just gets so fucking good so fast. I think from the performances to the action to everything involved, the boys is exactly what you want. And if you're liking this season like me, I'm happy you are. If you're not liking it, that's okay. Hopefully the final season works out for you. And now we get into my number four, which is my most rewatched show of the year. And that is Ted. I have been putting on Ted season one, just any sort of time that I can, because it's just such an easy sitcom show to watch. It is kind of like a live action family guy in a lot of ways. Some of the episodes are definitely way too long, but the laughs are there. And I've always loved Ted the Teddy Bear. I love Seth MacFarlane, but those original Ted movies I thought were hilarious. They're easy rewatches that I can go back to at any sort of time. And I've always thought it was an easy IP to kind of just keep mining and playing off of the fun idea. And a little bit of me rolled my eyes at the thought of a prequel. But the prequel works. The family's fun. John Bennett, the, the kid who plays John Bennett in here, is so good. And the usage of Ted is great. Seeing the origins of Ted and John and certain things that they did and where they came from were fantastic. And the whole Halloween episode is one that I just kept rewatching and laughing and smiling and enjoying myself at. And every single one of the times I put this on in the background and I can tune in, I laugh my ass off. I cannot wait for a season two. I hope they bring a little bit more of the heart from the original Ted because it has it in here. But it definitely was more of a sitcom aspect. I hope they get a little bit more deeper into some of the thematics that the first Ted did. But other than that, this is a near perfect first season and I can't wait for more. We get into my number three, which is the bear season three of a season that a lot of people like shit on. And weirdly enough, I was kind of expecting that I was late to the party on this by a couple days before all the reviews started coming out. And when I finally got to check it out, I binged it in about a day and a half. And absolutely loved it. Um, I think this is the second best season of the show so far. But I also think it's a really good season. Speaking about the same thing with the, how I talked about the boys. This feels like the setup season. The setup for the finale. And from the way that the season ends. And all the smaller details throughout. It does feel that this is the setup. For what will be the final season. And I'm always a fan of how seasons can do that. And how shows can do that. And end on their own merits. And maybe I'm wrong. This season 4 has not been confirmed to be the final season at all. But it definitely feels that that's where we're going to. And if that is the truth. And maybe it's not. And hopefully it's not. Because I like these characters so much. And I want to spend more time with them. Either way. I'm excited to see where it goes. I think this was a great season. I think episode six is one of my favorites of the entire series. Shout out to AO. She did an incredible job directing this. And even episode seven, the whole entire um, maternity scene, I thought was just super special and deserves a lot of awards. I think this is a season that maybe our main players who have won awards before didn't really sway or move in one way or the other within character development, but I think all the characters that we have wanted to little, know a little bit more about, such as like Tina, you get for this, and I think those little moments are the things that make me work. And I noticed that the show isn't just all about character development, it's about hanging out with these characters and spending time and feeling that stress in the kitchen, and that's what I love about The Bear Season 3. We get down to my number two, and I'm curious to see how many people actually watch this series but i love this show so much and i have issues with it still but i loved it and that is the ones who live the rick grimes show with michonne and as a giant walking dead fan from the comics to even the show which i will not defend fully but it did get better it just had its very harsh weak points that a lot of people dropped off on this was the series i've been waiting for Ever since Rick Grimes left the show, and specifically, especially when Michonne left the show, this was the series that I was needing answers to. I needed to know where everyone went. And while it's only six episodes, I definitely felt 
that there was more story to be told here. I think it could have used eight, nine episodes to fully tell out everything and not feel a little bit rushed. But by the end of it, I overall felt satisfied. This felt like a good ending for The Walking Dead. And I know they're still doing a Daryl Dixon season two. I know they're still doing a Negan and Maggie season two for their dead city. And I'm sure they'll be good because the first seasons were actually quite enjoyable for those. But I sat there in love with this series from top to bottom. I love the writing of it. I love the performances from everyone on board. Episode four, I think, is the big one when they're like locked in that room and they have a lot of conversational pieces. That was a point where it shows just the powerhouse of Andrew Lincoln and Denai Guerrero and their performances with one another and how strong they are as actors. And I like in the end of the day how they really did just focus on them. And I think that in the end of the day, that was the point of the series was to focus in on them, not this organization that they have built up for a while. And I think that's why some fans were disappointed. And part of me did want a little bit more of, but they're planning a season two, maybe at San Diego Comic-Con when I go, they'll announce that this is the big thing that's going to be coming up and they're going to be showing off more of this. They start to finally pop up in other things such as Daryl Dixon and the Negan and Maggie show. And these are all questions, but as just talking about the series itself, it delivered exactly what I personally wanted was a great conclusion to both their storylines in the Walking Dead world. And I got exactly that. And I absolutely loved it. I thought this was such a brilliantly written show. And again, as a Walking Dead fan, I felt satisfied. But the best television show of this year, hands down, is X-Men 97. A show that I didn't think was going to be great. I thought it would be good because I love the original animated X-Men series. But every episode not only got better than the last, it ended in such an incredible way that made me go... I need season two right now, and thank God it's already filmed or already made, and you know they're they're making it and finishing it up for hopefully next year release. But I, I didn't expect it to be great. In fact, it actually made me pissed at like the X Men films that we've gotten, which are enjoyable, but it shows you how much is lost from the X Men comics and X Men ninety seven. If you are an X Men comic reader. It makes you relive so much of that nostalgia, but also if you never read the comics and you just like the animated show, it shows you how smart and strong and ahead of the time that show was and how it's still relevant to today's standards. And also how animation can be used as a medium for this. Like now Marvel Studios has a major thing to really correlate with itself when it does actually bring in its own team of X-Men and having to tell that story. And I loved how each episode built off the last, had something new to it, but always gave us character development for everyone on board. And the one episode that pops in my head is the usage of Gambit, Rogue, and of course Magneto. And how that episode nearly broke me in half. Snapped me. Uh, and I remember watching it. I had to watch that one at work. Uh, well, not at work, but on my lunch at work. And I turned, I came back and I, my eyes were red. And my coworker was like, you good, man? I was like, dude, X-Men 97, because he was also watching it. And then he watched it on his lunch and came back. He's like, oh, shit, yeah. Um, it, it broke me. And I think this entire series just showcases how great the X-Men are and why they are some of the best comic book characters ever made. I just love 97 so much, and I can't wait to definitely hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. So leave your top 10 down there. Thank you so much again for watching this. And, of course, until next time, stay classy. Stay classy.